access to certain political forces have been uh, after, you know, or, or, or uh, pushing for, for, for decades. Same thing with Donald Trump and the discourse in, in the United States presidential election. The people were so shocked, and all the people in his party, the Republicans, were like, well, we, we disown him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Participate in the scandalous. It's you know the same people that are saying scandalous have been promoting the same ideas in in more or less covert ways, you know, more or less polite ways. Uh, in some cases, in some cases not. That he is. He's 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 um, he's being opportunistic and and clever in a way. Yeah, but for the past thirty years at least. Um, you know, the Republicans have been steadily uh, using race, regionalism, class, uh, immigration, militarism, all these things uh, as political football. And they've been provoking people and offending people, uh, gay people, women, single women, uh, people on welfare, and so forth. It's, it's, it's a combination of what they've all been saying, now they're all shocked. Know, like people are all shocked that, that, that the UK leaves the European Union. I don't see how it, people should be so shocked. Or that someone like Trump could appear and just take advantage of the political discourse in the past 30, 40 years. Not surprising. So yeah. what's the solution? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, I, I don't think, I think you have to stop thinking what is the solution. Like, we fix this thing and now it's okay. Yeah. I think the solution is if you don't like it, Vote at the very least, and if you're really inspired, run for office in your town and city and country. Is this something you've been interested in? Being a politician? Yeah. No. <laughs> I vote. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. I speak my mind. Yeah. I speak with my friends, and I read and I try to inform myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna throw it for uh, the questions. There. So if I can get lady there in the white. I'm going to Michael to you. Thank you. Hi. Um, hi. So first of all, I want to say well done on the film. It's a really special film. Um, but if there was one thing or one idea you personally would like people to take away after watching this, what would it be? Everything you're doing is wrong. At least for a moment. About something. I mean, I do like stories. When I read them, when I go to the we here to see them. I like stories that challenge me, that make me question, oh well, maybe I... Well, in the same way that my character does in the story, there's a moment where he feels like everything's wrong, he throws it all out, and just quits, basically. And then, uh, thanks to his kids, and thanks to just calming down, I suppose, to some degree as well, he realizes that certain aspects of the family model they've set up for themselves do work. That there's it's common sense to have open dialogue and to be honest with your kids and to to work collectively, to have open discourse, to strive for physical and, and intellectual excellence. It's a question of degree of tone. Um, and also that aspect I talked about earlier, isolation, maybe that's not always the best thing and uh, to reflect, you know, in this case I think you can say from the start that he's someone who's very much against rigidity and authoritarianism, and yet he ends up engaging in that inadvertently because he's trying to protect his kids, I suppose, and his blended yeah. isolation and all that. All these things, you know, they teach him something, and as an audience member, I like it when I, uh, I'm watching a movie and suddenly, oh my God, you know, my relationship family or just the way I act as a person or what I said yesterday to someone or something I forgot to do or the fact that I could read, you can always read more books, you can always, um, you can always do better, there's always room for improvement, uh, sometimes it's depressing. Uh, what you, that feeling of everything wrong, I, I'm, I'm really lazy, I'm not anywhere near uh, getting the most out of life. It was just observation and, and being honest with myself about some aspects of my life. I like that. So, yeah, in a 
sense, yeah. That would be you doing it wrong. At least for a second. That's okay. Okay, I'll take another one. Uh, you, yeah, I'll go for one over there. Get my tip. Right there in the middle. Can you come down here? Oh, shit. <laughs> It's a great movie theater, by the way. I was here the last time I was in Dublin, it was last July, and I saw a movie here. What did you see? Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many movies since then. I think... Two Faces of January? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't a movie. It was in a good movie. <laughs> I don't remember more. Just like, walking here and walking downstairs and saying, I'll think I'm not, I'll think of it before I leave. Cool. Uh, I'm going to have to ask the... Do you guys know what was playing last July? We have a list. I actually worked for a list since last July, so I can find it, okay? Yeah, if somebody finds out, I'll tell you what it was. Do you know who was in it? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give you a full review of it. Give you a list. Iris? Iris? No. <laughs> what else? I'm assuming it was an Iris film, yeah? No, it was a movie. Oh. I mean, it was a fiction. It's during game. Yeah, it was last the end of last July. Yeah, I'll find out and let you know. Okay. <laughs> okay, on that. You got the mic? Yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to add. My question is regarding just process. You mentioned the whole notion of being convincing in uh, the skills and activities of film. I know previous work you want to kind of be very invested beforehand and get the just get the work right. I'm wondering, in, uh, was your process any different in this film? In terms of the ensemble, was it a bit of a free-for-all? Was there any kind of formal training in these activities? Or even when it comes to the performances themselves, was there kind of a much of a collaboration in terms of um, rehearsal, or was it just each, each to their own? No, I mean, the kids, uh, fortunately, the director included me in the final stage of casting with each of the six uh, actors, I mean, the six characters of my children. In the story, and uh, so that was a head start for me in terms of getting to know, getting to know the people I was going to be working with. And for the director, it was good to see him interact. He didn't know what I was going to do, really. So you got to see me auditioning with them in a sense, and uh, and then we got together a couple of weeks beforehand. Um, the kids like I did have prepared on our, you know, on that preparing my own physically and certain skills. And, uh, things I didn't know about. Uh, I had to learn to look like I knew what I was doing. And then we got to two weeks before, which was really helpful to do the things that we had to do as, as a team, you know, collective uh, efforts like, like the rock climbing, like the music, improvising together, playing music, um, martial arts, uh, the forest, the yoga, you know, lots of things that we, you know, and then, and then the girls, the two older girls, went and learned how to, you know, uh, to uh, slaughter gut and skin sheep so that they could do the deer, things like that. I had to get familiar with bagpipes, guitar, you know, I wasn't familiar with those. Are you going to pick, are you going to keep that up after? Uh, I'm not really good with pipes. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it takes years and years. But I'm um, keep playing the guitar. Uh, um, yeah, and that, that was really helpful, not just so that we would seem, it would be credible what we were doing on screen, um, but also the environment we were in it was important. I mean, I, I went before we even had to do rehearsal period. Uh, the director let me put it in the garden. And just, it was important that even though you don't see it for very long in the movie, that it be believable. Percent that yeah, they could live this way, and the food source, the sanitation, and everything seemed real. And it was also obviously very important that it seemed like a real family. And I think this two week period helped us, you know, for all the skills, but the most important thing was the bonding that we experienced in those two weeks. By the time we got to the first day of shooting, we were really efficient. And, you know, it's an independent movie, so. So you have a limited time to shoot these things. You're working with uh, very young children and they have, like they do here, limited working hours. Um, so we didn't have, and we moved around a lot. A lot of locations, some difficult to get to. 
So it was very ambitious undertaking for, for, for the whole team, and um, it helped a lot that by the first day we knew each other really well, and then one or two days we could you had a show around, get yeah. it done, and that the little kids were knew what that was expected of them, and when they had to give a monologue about build rights or, or show some particular skill in rock climbing, they were just, they were right on and they were ready. Cool. Okay, one more. Uh, one down here. How are you doing? Uh, you're my favorite actor, by the way. Um, Thank you very much. Um, you've played a couple of kind of um, desperate kind of uh, hero heroes, um, and as we're just kind of muddling through, um, and some of the movies are quite bleak, like the road. What do you find most appealing about those roles? About the other roles? I like, uh, I mean, when I, I mean, people, sometimes people think, well, that actors, if they become a little, at least a little bit well known, they can do whatever they want. And why don't you do that movie? Or why are you doing that sort of thing? They have to ask you first. You can say yes or no. But uh, the things that I get to read and people are interested in me for, first of all, I'm looking for stories that I go see, which is very subjective, of course, but things that I find interesting, that I pay money to go see. Um, and, and secondly, I suppose it's, it's the things that I find engaging or dramatic and funny are stories that uh, about people that I can I could identify with that are relatively ordinary people on some level, um, even if they're supposed to be extraordinary. I, I, I would, I mean, I believe. Let's say Aragorn and Lord of the Rings. That way, I want him to be a real person that you could identify with, and yet people who are, whether it's Captain Fantastic or Lord of the Rings or the Road, ordinary people that are suddenly faced with extraordinary obstacles or situations. And then as an audience member, I sit back and okay, what would I do? Or what are they doing? Or that's wrong? Or that's well, that's admirable or not? Would I run? Would I be brave? Would I admit to making mistakes? The same because it happened fantastic. How would I react? You know? Would I be too proud to learn from it? Would I even be aware of the fact that I made a mistake? Uh, obviously, perilous situations. How do they get through it? There's entertainment value to it, but there's also, I, I mean, I, I can't speak for, for any of you, but I know that I go to the theater and I go see movies because I want to be taken somewhere. I want to watch those people and wonder what I would do. I want to feel different when I meet with movie theater on some level, I suppose. And when a movie really works, and I believe in what's happening, um, I'm stimulated and I do, I, I, am, I do feel differently when I leave, you know. Um, I want to see if you disagree on that. I mean, you were talking about movies, and you said this as you were coming in, that you know, we're all together watching this. Um, you know, I, I saw one of your interviews before, and you basically said that, you know, 90% of the script they are crap. Well, you actually said shit, but yeah, yeah. But um, I suppose my question, you know, because, you know, like, it's almost like, again, it's almost kind of a cliche to say it, but we are kind of living in this golden age of television, and the writing that's on TV nowadays is just so. So fantastic. I mean, have you ever been tempted to kind of transition? Is this something you'd be interested in? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I've never looked at television as being an inferior medium. I know that until maybe 10 years ago or so, there was that general conception sure. that, well, he's doing television because he can't get movie work. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel that. I do. Recognize it's obvious that the quality of uh, not all of them, there's a lot of terrible television as well. <laughs> um, probably most of it is terrible. But, but there are series that come out of the United States, uh, out of Europe, and certainly out of you know, Denmark. And they're, they're incredible series. I, I was offered um, a job in, in one that I really like, The Bridge, the original one. There was a character that was to be replaced, but I, I, I wasn't available, and 
I mean, I considered, I thought, well, it would be a crazy kind of commute, you know, to leave every Friday and come back every Monday and you know, be you know, crazy. And I just had a family and had obligations, I couldn't do it. But it was tempting because I really, I like the writing on that show or in other shows. Uh, and because I speak English, I could have done it and would have been really uh, a good challenge. But uh, apart from that, I don't think I've really been offered. Uh, but there's a series about Vikings uh, in English, in the US. Uh, Still there. They call Vikings. Vikings. Still there. Yeah. And that, that was, I liked it. And some of the things are over the top, but the base, the script I read, the original scripts, the first part of the series, the pilot, where it had a good foundation in the sagas and in the history of particularly Iceland and Norway, and uh, that was tempting. But again, I, was, I had another job at the time. Is so, that one of the Cronenberg films you were on? I think it was one. Probably, yeah. I don't remember. But, you know, I'm, I'm sort of stubborn in that way. If someone's, it's not that I'm trying to avoid tea or studio movies, it's just whatever i said yes to it. I'm going to stick with it until it's done and the promotion's done. And once in a while you offer things sure. that would be tempting in that, uh, at another time if you were available. I just don't. I would tweet you on when somebody.